In this video, we're going to look at continuous random variables, density functions for continuous random variables, and how to calculate the mean and variance, and of course the standard deviation. Let's first look at what a continuous random variable is. Um, for a continuous random variable, we're going to have a density function f of x. Uh, we, we are now calling it a density function with a discrete random variable. We called it a, a probability distribution function. Um, well, we can use those interchangeably. This function is a continuous function on this sample space or this range. Uh, basically, x going from minus infinity to infinity. Now, if you remember, the discrete random variable only was only valid at a um, countable number of, uh, you know, finite countable number of points or a countably infinite number of points. Whereas here, the continuous random variable is valid over a uncountable infinite number of points and that's what makes it a continuous random variable. So if you look at this function f of x notice that it's a continuous function it doesn't have di uh, jumps in it, it doesn't have discontinuities and if we look, wanted to calculate some probabilities like we did before suppose we wanted to know the probability that x was between little a and or sorry, between yeah, lowercase a and lowercase b, we find that by doing a integral in this case, an integral of the function, as opposed to the, with a discrete random variable, we would do a summation. So here we're doing an integral. We have to integrate this continuous function, and we'll integrate it from a to b to find out that probability. So what are the properties of the density function for a continuous RV? Well. A lot of the things that we're going to cover are very similar to what we've already covered with the discrete random variable. The density function can be greater than or equal to zero. Now in this case we'll find that it actually can be greater than one. So we're not specifically dealing with um, probabilities of specific values in terms of uh, discrete random variables. The integral of the function is a probability. Um, so we'll find that it can actually go greater than 1. However, if we integrate the whole function, it can't be bigger than 1. So the integral of the whole function will not get bigger than 1. So for the expected value, again, we're going to call it mu, and we'll say the expected value of our random variable x, in this case, is a integral from minus infinity to infinity. Now we're still in integrating something that looks similar to what we had before. We've got x times our density function, f of x, and we just integrate that from minus infinity to infinity. The variance, sigma sub x squared, we'll call it again, is the expected value of x minus the mean squared, or quantity squared, and we would in basically integrate the function from minus infinity to infinity. Notice that we have x minus mu squared in here times our density function. So again, whatever we have in here for our expected value, we can put in this location here times our density function. So we had x up here, and here we have x minus mu squared. Now just like we did with the, de the discrete random variables, the, expect or the variance can also be written as the expected value of x squared minus mu squared. And so we need to calculate the expected value of x squared. So again, we take that whatever we have inside here and put it in this, lo this location. We have x squared in this case, so it's the integral from minus infinity to infinity of x squared times our density function. Once you find that expected value of x squared, don't forget to put that back up here and subtract the mean squared from that value, and that'll give us the variance. Let's do an example. We'll use a specific density function, uh, a very common density function. It's called the uniform distribution or uniform distribution function. And in this case, we'll do an example. Suppose we have a machine that makes bolts that can be any length from 1 to 2 inches. And so therefore, it's a continuous value. And they are equal, all equally likely. Now we're going to find the mean, the variance, and the standard deviation of this, of this uh, bolt length from 1 to 2 inches. Now before we do that specifically for 1 to 2 inches, we're going to do it in general for any uniform density function, uniform distribution function. So we're going to answer it in general. So we're saying that our function can take values from a to b, or our random variable can take values from a to b, and it's a uniform 
distribution so it'll be constant from A to B. Now we need to figure out what that constant is. What, what is that height of that? We find that height by by using our property that if we integrate the density function from minus infinity to infinity we should get 1 and so we'll in do that integral and then we'll, we'll um, set it equal to 1 and then solve for that height. So our density function f of x only has non-zero values from a to b and so we'll integrate from a to b and put our value in h. Now of course from minus infinity to a is 0 and from b to minus to positive infinity is 0 so we're just dropping those parts out. So we do that integral we get x times h evaluated from a to b and we get h times b minus a and we set that equal to 1 since that integral of the whole density function must be equal to 1. Setting equal to 1 we can solve for h so h will be equal to 1 over b minus a and that's what the height has to be. Now how did we know? We could have figured that out actually beforehand knowing about the integral function. The integral function essentially gives us the area under the curve. So if we have a rectangle area then its area is the base times the height or the base length is b minus a so that'll be b minus a and the height is h. So that's exactly what we ended up with b or h times b minus a. Set that equal to 1 and we solve for h. All right, now let's calculate the mean. The mean is our expected value of x, and so we plug it into our definition. I'll try to write the definition. I won't do it all the time, but write the definition first. We are integrating from minus infinity to infinity of x times f of x. And so we need to, again, plug in our density function that we have. In this case, it's 0 everywhere except from a to b. So we'll integral from minus infinity to a we're integrating 0. a to b, we're integrating 1 over b minus a because that's what our height value is. And then from b to infinity, we're integrating 0. The only one that's non-zero will be this one. We'll get x squared over 2 times 1 over b minus a. Plug in our b and a terms, so we get b squared minus a squared over b minus a times 2. The top part we can factor into these two parts, b minus a times b plus a. If you multiply that through, you'll see that we get b squared minus a squared. The b minus a terms cancel on the top and the bottom, and we're left with b plus a over 2. That b plus a over 2 should be exactly what we were expecting. The mean we know gives us the middle point, you know, the weighted middle point, and we know that since this is constant, the exact middle point will be right here at b plus a over 2. So now let's calculate the variance. The variance is defined as, we'll use this term, the expected value of x squared minus mu squared. So we'll calculate the expected value of x squared first, and then we'll plug it in, subtract this mean from it, mean squared from it, and then find our answer. Uh, this is usually the, the uh, easier or simpler way of doing this, uh, this type of calculation for the variance. So the expected value of x squared will have the x squared term in here now times our density function. We'll integrate from minus infinity to infinity. Again, it's non-zero only from a to b, so I plug that in, and the density function itself during that period is equal to 1 over b minus a. Integrating that, we get x cubed over 3 times 1 over b, plus b minus a. Plug in our b and a, we get b cubed minus a cubed over 3b minus a. All right, now that's just our expected value of x squared, so we'll have to plug that back in. So the variance is equal to the expected value of x squared minus the mean squared. Plug in that value that we had above minus the mean squared. Don't forget to square it. It's real simple to f either forget to put it in at all or to forget to square it. Make sure you do that. Now I'm not showing the simplification, but it, it can be shown that we'll end up with b minus a squared over 12. Okay, so that's the variance for a uniform density function, b minus a squared over 12. All right, so there's our variance that we wanted. So let's plug in now our mean and our variance for our specific values. 
A was equal to 1, B was 2, because our bolt went from 1 to 2 inches, and the height was 1. So we plug those values in, we get for the mean, 3 halves, and for the variance, we just get 1 on top, so it's 1 twelfth, and therefore the standard deviation is the square root of that, square root of 1 twelfth. Alright, let's do another example. In this case, we're going to be given the specific density function for our random variable. In this case, it's 2 times x from 0, x going from 0 to 1, and we're going to find the mean, the variance, and we're going to sketch the, the function itself. All right, when we sketch the function, we need to look at where, you know, where it's equal to a particular value or a particular function, and then sketch it over that part. The first thing I would do is look at the endpoints, find what the values are at the endpoints. So at 0, we get 0, and at 1, we put that in, we get 2. And so we know the function is going to go, you know, start at 0 at 0, and end up at 2 at 1, when x is equal to 1. Now we know it's a linear function, so we can just draw a straight line from those two points, 0 to 2. Alright, so there's a sketch of our function. Everywhere else it's equal to 0, so I just put elsewhere it is 0. Now we need to do our, our mean, so it's the expected value of x. x goes from, or we're going to integrate from minus infinity to infinity. It's only non-zero from 0 to 1, and during that time we plug in the function 2x. Since, so, they will, so then we'll end up with 2 times x squared. We integrate that function. We get x cubed over 3 times 2, evaluate it at our endpoints, and we end up with 2 thirds for the mean. Let's find the variance now using this term with the expected value of x squared minus the mean squared. The expected value of x squared, we plug in x squared to our integral. Integrating from minus infinity to infinity, we're left with 0 to 1, where we're non-zero. Now this time we have x squared in there times 2x. 2x is our density function, which gives us the integral from 0 to 1 times x cubed, or of x cubed, with a 2 outside. Integrate that, we get 2x to the 4 over 4. Evaluated our endpoints, we just end up with 1 half. Finding our variance then, we just take that value we just calculated, which was 1 half, and we subtract off the mean squared. So it'll be 1 half minus 2 thirds was our mean, and we square that, and we end up with 1 18th. All right, again, if this end up, ends up being negative, you know you've done something wrong, because the value should not end, ever be negative. Let's do another, another example. Uh, basically, it's similar to one we just did, but we're also going to find the probability that x will be between 0 and 4. We're going to plot our function, so it's a linear function, 1 8th x from 3 to 5, and so I've plotted those values here. It's 3 8 and 5 8 at those endpoints, and so it's just a line. Everywhere else is equal to 0. The mean, again, integral, integral in this case from 3 to 5 of x times our density function, 1 8th x, and we get 1 24th times x cubed. Evaluated our endpoints, we end up with 98 24ths or 49 twelfths. Ends up being 4.083. Now to get our variance, plug that value, or uh, sorry, we're going we're gonna to find this value first, the expected value of x squared. Expected value of x squared, integral from 0 to 5, x squared times our density function, 1 8th x. Solve it, plug in those values, we get 17. So the variance is going to be 17 minus the mean squared. Solving for that, we get 47 over 144, or 0.326. Okay, all very similar to what we've done before. Now we're going to find this probability. The probability is this integral will be an integral from 0 to 4 of our density function itself. Because it's non-zero only for that part there, only from 3 to 4, we integrate three from 3 to 4 of 1 8th x. We end up with x squared over 16, evaluated from 3 to 4. Plug those values in, we get 7 16ths or 0 0.438.